This clip is brought to you by SaveWithConrad.com. Let's talk about Mark Merrow and Sable. They're going to sign with the company here in the first quarter of the year. And I think you've told the story before that when Vince meets Rena, he thinks, oh man, we got to do something here. But we've also heard over the years that Vince really liked the Johnny B bad character, but that's a Turner property, not something he could actually do. But you, you also said just a few minutes ago, you had plans for him and Hunter on the other side. So we're going to see Sable, you know, escort Hunter to the ring and all that jazz. What can you tell us about what your, your hopes were when they first come in and were they aligned with Vince's or is this one of those where Vince is like, you don't see it. I'm going to prove you wrong or whatever. Well, nobody had seen it. Right. You know, all anybody had ever seen of Mark Merrow was Johnny B. Bad. Right. No one had ever seen Mark Merrow. And while Mark was a really nice guy and personable, the Johnny B. Bad character was over the top. It was flamboyant. It had charisma. And playing that character was something that Mark Merrow did well. Playing Mark Merrow on screen? I don't, didn't do well because that, that person didn't have the charisma of Johnny B. Bad. Didn't have the presence of Johnny B. Bad and everything that Mark tried to do to bring out some of those Johnny B. Bad characteristics came across as forced and not genuine. The eyes and and all that shit, it just didn't feel real. There was nothing about it that felt real. And then you realize when you go back and, and you're watching shit, it, it's why if someone would send a, a tape, you know, here's my work, and it's a highlight tape, throw it in the trash. Yeah. Because all that tells me is you can't do anything else other than a couple of big moves, flip-flop and fly and yeehaw. And great. Send me a match you're doing a job. Right. <laughs> Show me how you can work. Show me how you can tell a story. Um, send me a promo, not clips of 10 different promos. Tell me a story. And, you know, you, you kind of look back and go, God damn, we were infatuated with Johnny B. Bad. Not the guy playing Johnny B. Bad. And we got the guy playing Johnny B. Bad. I think it was Chris Hero who I heard say something like, uh, Back then, the way to send a tape to get noticed was you would send a baby face promo and a baby face match that you won. And then you would send a heel promo and a heel match that you lost, but you had to show your range that, Hey, I can do everything. And let me show you a full promo and the match that goes with it. And another full promo and a match that goes with it. One where you win, one where you lose. Would that still be the strategy these days? Or would you recommend something different? I mean, that, that definitely, that definitely helps. I think nowadays in the era of YouTube and what have you, you send links of, yeah, yeah, <laughs> of, yeah, yeah, of, course. of my highlight shit. Um, but I, I think that the business has changed too, quite a bit where we don't have an opportunity to tell long stories and matches and what have you. Um, you got to display that you have a personality and you've got some charisma and you can talk a little bit. Uh, then it was, you didn't know these people. There was no internet. You didn't, you didn't have the opportunity to go and search. The only thing that you had is what they sent you most of the time. And for Mark Merrow, all you had seen was what he had done on WCW. Also too, you know, I I know we're sort of talking in circles here, but I've heard other folks say that, you know, anybody could have a great 20 minute match, but can you show that you're a star in a TV match? That's, you know, four, six, eight minutes. That's probably important too, right? I mean, the WWE is a television company. I mean, sure. I know they do a lot of other stuff, but if you can only really look like a star in 38 minutes, you're probably not ready for TV, right? It depends if you can, if you can do both and right. you probably want to show both. There you go. But when you can only do one or the other, it's tough. Yes. Let's talk about, um, the next match here. It's a segment that doesn't air to the live audience, but they're doing an interview introducing wild man, Mark Merrow, who did a heel interview until Helmsley comes out and the two start arguing and fighting Helmsley, then blame the fight on the woman who they called Sable that accompanied to the ring that night. 
what'd you think of this? I mean, okay, we squashed him, but we're giving him something to do, but we're also introducing a new character. What'd you think of this uh, vignette or skit? Well, to me, at least it gave, it gave Hunter something back a little bit. And for Marrow, this was his introduction and it was okay. But more than anything, I think that that, that night, <laughs> you know, it's like, I felt really bad for Hunter because it, it just was, um, not a great day. Tell me a little bit about the relationship he had with Sean. We know the year prior Hunter's hanging out backstage. Uh, I think Terry Taylor recommends that he, uh, try to ride with Kevin Nash and Sean Michaels. They become fast friends. They're off to the races. They're the click now, uh, for lack of a better word, Sean is going to be the top guy here. It's his crowning moment, but he's obviously pulled in a lot of directions and, and, and he's waiting for his sort of crowning moment this night. Is he giving any pushback to the way his pals being treated here? Or is that not yet a thing? That's, I mean, on um, for that. No. Okay. Talk uh, a little bit about, uh, the observer. They write the huckster nacho man, billionaire, t- billionaire, Ted skip match will be on the pregame show, which pretty much removes the legal threats from the, from that skit by using the likeness of Hulk Hogan, Ted Turner, and Randy Savage all owned or controlled by WCW as part of an endeavor in which the public pays for it, which the pay-per-view falls into, but a free show doesn't, they would open themselves up for potential legal action down the road. So the idea is there was a match originally promoted. That's going to have Nacho Man and Huckster and Billionaire Ted in a match on the pay-per-view. Now it's the pre-show. Did the possibility of litigation, since you guys were already thinking that way, cross your mind? No, really and truly, the whole thought process behind it was, goddamn, let's just get get over with this and move on. And no one was going to buy the pay-per-view for that. No, correct. And it was, it was more along the lines of just let's get it over with, put it on the pre-show, be done with it and just be done. So by this point, you guys were just frustrated with the whole thing, but knew you had to have a payoff. So let's just get it over with. Okay. Is that one of those deals in hindsight where it seemed like a good idea on paper, but then it was just a fart in church. Like nobody cares. What are we doing? It's, it's, it's funny maybe one or two times, but then it just became okay. Yeah. We're over it. Yeah. Hey, hey, it's Conrad Thompson. Thanks for checking out the podcast here on YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you get a notice anytime we upload some new content. And go save yourself some money right now. If you're in a 30-year loan or you have credit card debt, it's not a matter of if I can save you money. It's a matter of how much. Find out right now for free at SaveWithConrad.com.